Hello everyone, it is Lori at Cut and Paste Craft Studio. Thank you so much for joining us today as we paint our giraffe canvas. If you're seeing this on Facebook Live, uh, you probably don't have this canvas design, that's okay. You can order it online, cutandpastecraftstudio.com. And then this will be saved to YouTube, so you can then um, join us later. If you're joining us from YouTube, you've already bought the kit, thank you so much. And um, I'm going to get you started in just a minute. If you haven't ordered yet, please note, you do not have to use these colors. If you order it, uh, put a note in the um, order down in the comments about what colors you'd like. You'll need um, a background color and five colors for um, the um, giraffe himself. Or you could use fewer colors if you need an extra color. That's okay, too. Um, and this is a very... Um, do it however you want to sort of design. Um, you'll note that on the design, I have not traced in all these little squares, um, all these little shapes. You're gonna be doing those on your own, choosing how you want to do them as we go. And then uh, when we're done with it, you can decide whether to paint the background black or not. That's up to you as well. Um, so we are gonna get started. Now, first off, if you have not painted with me before, um, I'm going to introduce you to our brushes. You'll have three in your kit. One is a wider brush, great for great big open spaces, but we'll use it for some of our little squares. It's got a nice flat edge for getting right up to the edge of things. Uh, we've got a medium sized brush, again, flat edge, great for straight lines. Um, and you'll use that for some of your smaller spaces. And then last, you've got your little pointy brush, which is really good, in, good at getting into the little details. And you can, um, um, always switch to a smaller brush. If you think the brush I'm using is too big for you, switch down. Um, and I forgot my water bowl. Hang on one second. Sorry about that. I poured it out and left it right over there. Okay. So first off, um, you need to decide um, which color you're going to start with. And it really doesn't matter. And where you start really doesn't matter. Um, but I'm going to start here at the bottom and work my way up. I am going to, as I do each little, um, I don't know what you call that shape. It's sort, they're sort of rectangles with rounded corners. Uh, you could make yours more square. You could make yours have bigger gaps or no gap at all. You could um, sort of um, blend the colors together if you like. Um, but I'm going to start off, um, I believe it's color number one in your container. I'm just going to start off with this pretty blue color. It's called Coastal Waters. And I'm just going to start, I'm going to have my rectangles kind of go in this direction. So I'll start with one right about there. And I'll kind of round my corners a little bit. I got a little too much paint on there. I don't want to leave that clump, so I'm going to brush that down. Um, if you get a little too much paint on your brush, just wipe it off. There you go. And there's our first design. Now, you could bounce, you know, switch between colors as you go, um, but the problem with that is you're going to be washing and drying that brush over and over and over again, and I think you're going to get really bored with that. So, what you're going to do is just keep adding squares. You could go this size. Um, you could take your next one, woo, you got way too much paint there. And we will just brush that off. If you have a Q-tip, Q-tips are great for just cleaning up a little color right like that. There we go. So again, don't glob too much paint on your brush. I'm going to come over here and do one of my um, designs coming straight out from the side and I'm going to kind of round my corners. If you want to come in with your smaller brush and get those corners even more rounded, you can do that too. Also, as you're painting, and if you've painted with me before, you've heard me say this a hundred times, turn your canvas. If it gets awkward to paint in a particular direction, turn your canvas. Now I'm putting, um, I think I'm going to switch to my smaller brush now, so I am putting my bigger brush in the water. Always, always, always 
keep those brushes in the water. Um, you'd be amazed at how quickly those will dry out. And just keep working your way up, kind of staggering things. Maybe I'll go right about here. And really, these are just random shapes. Um, I and, and how big you go really depends on how you want to. Um, I think I'm ending up with smaller shapes here than I started with. Yep. Um, what I may do is on my next color go a little bit bigger just because I don't want to spend all day. You're, if you keep your shapes small like this, um, it's going to take a lot longer to paint. Um, if you think, oh, well, I want to make that one shape bigger, and just do it. Just come along and make him bigger. There you go. I think I'll make this one up here a little bit bigger too because again I'm going to be here for three hours if I make all of them too small. There we go. Um, and then as we get up toward the base we will go with smaller ones because those are smaller spaces and you don't want great big giant um, colors running into things. Let's do one right about here. And see we're running right up to the edge so he's kind of half a spot showing. And maybe one right over here. Maybe his cheek had a little spot with this blue. And uh, right about here. Now your spots are not going where my spots are going. Your spots go wherever you want them to. But I just want to make sure I've got them kind of randomly placed around here. Do a kind of biggish one along this line here. Maybe one right about there. And y'all, we've had a little trouble with Facebook these days, so if it does freeze, I should be able to get you back pretty quickly. So just hold on, and um, if you see me freeze, I will come back pretty fast. And then when I do the square, when I do little shapes over here on the ears, I'm not going to go out in the outside. I'm going to do this outside part of the ear in an, one color. So I may do some little blocks you know, just inside that ear. Maybe one there and one right there. Okay, now I may have to come back and add more of this color, but for right now I've got all the blue on there I want. Um, I think it's better to add fewer squares um, because then later you might find that, oh, I haven't left enough room for my next color. Um, and now as you're painting along, you'll notice that this blue, it's called Coastal Waters. It's probably one of our most popular colors. Um, and it covers really, really well. Some other colors you may feel like later you need to go back with a second coat, um, like the yellow. Um, sometimes yellow is a very sheer color and you want to go back in with it um, with another one. Now I'm going to show you down here how I'm going to do this yellow. Um, I'm going to stagger it. I don't want it right exactly even. And I'm going to leave some space between the yellow and the blue. Yeah, I can tell this yellow may want me to put a second coat on later. Now you may like the sheer look, so you may want to leave that alone. Um, I will not do the second coats on camera because that's boring. <laughs> but when I leave you at the end of all this, I'll give you some instructions on things you can do after I leave. You can always add more, um, add a little more design, get a little more exciting about things. That's completely up to you. And again, I'm going to go up to the blue, but I'm not going to touch. Now, yours could touch. You know, you could say, well, I don't want any white showing in between there at all. And you could bring it right up to the edge. Um, or you could um, leave a great big huge gap if you want to. I think I need one right about here. And you know, honestly, I love that look of the yellow and the blue together. You could do something like this where um, 
you know, if you were doing this uh, uh, to a different shape of an animal or you wanted to do another one like this later, maybe a lion's face or a tiger, um, you could go with just two colors. Um, and, you know, what if we had a slightly darker blue and a slightly lighter and maybe a couple of shades of yellow? That would be a really, um, that would be really pretty. Uh, but for now, we are just using the colors that we have. Yellow right there in the middle of his nose. I'm going to make this one a little more triangular shape just because it's going to be coming close to that eye. And let's put up, you know what, let's fill in the very top of this. I'm going to fill in the very top. It's again up to you how you want to do that. Now your lines, as I said, are not as dark as mine. I just wanted you to be able to see them um, as we were painting. Put another one right about here. I'll go up to the black line, but I will not go all the way up to the blue. And again, um, if you've painted with me before, you know I like to brace my wrist on the canvas. Um, that just gives me a little more control. Where am I missing? Maybe, maybe a little spot right about here. There we go. And I think that's all the yellow I'm going to do for now. Now you might at this point want to decide, okay, um, I'm going to paint this little trim on the outside of the ear, um, but I don't want to have another color that's bumping right up against it. Um, so I may choose my colors right now um, to do these ears, and I think I'm going to do my ears in pink. Now you all, um, if you have a blow dryer, you can pause the video and go find a blow dryer. Yeah, this pink is going to need an extra coat as well. Um, and dry something up so that you're not, um, like when you set your wrist on it, you're not smearing it. You know what? Let's switch brushes. If it's getting awkward, go for your smaller brush. And I'm just going to follow the line right about down like that. All right, and I think I'm going to do both ears with this pink. Just outlining them. And then um, I just won't use very much pink at all inside the ear if I use it at all. And then because I got way outside my lines here, I'm going to use my little Q-tip. You could use a bit of paper towel, whatever you need to just clean it up. Woo! And get a little carried away there. You could always come back a little later with some white to touch up there or don't worry about it at all if you're going to do the whole background black because black covers most anything. All right, so since I already have pink on that brush, um, let's go ahead and do some pink, do our pink squares down here. Now I'm going to pretend like this one comes right up to that line and then, you know, maybe wraps around the giraffe. So that square will be right there. Um, let's put another one right here. And I don't want him to be perfectly even with that blue, so I'm going to bring it out a little further. Got a little too much paint on that brush. There we go. And the pink, uh, I don't know if you can tell on mine, but that pink is a little um, sheer. So I, you might want to add a second coat later. Now I'm going to go along here and see how it's kind of an odd corner there. So I'm going to make it kind of an odd shape like that and then brush it out out here and just kind of make it the normal square when we get out here. Again, I'm leaving those little lines there so I'm a little too thick on the paint. There we go. 
Yeah, definitely going to go back later and put more of this pink on the brush. Add a second coat to make it a little bolder. And then I think he needs a pink one right about here. Let's curve those edges a little more. And maybe one right up here. Maybe it'll even connect, like right there, up into the edge. That's up to you. Remember, you guys do these how you like them. And obviously, if I'm painting a little too fast for you, well, I got a little too close to that yellow there. I may go back later with some white um, and just touch that up there. Oh, I took a little pink off. That's a little better. Um, hmm, where am I missing the pink that I need to fill in? I'm thinking right here. There we go. And again, don't make your shapes too perfect. You want them to have all kinds of style to them. I think maybe right about here. And you will have to go back because obviously, you know, we aren't going to space these perfectly the first time. So we'll have to go back probably and add some more blue a little later. Maybe add a little pink somewhere else a little later. I think his nose probably needs a little pink right there. Maybe we'll come right over here to this edge and bring it out till it's close to the yellow but not touching. All right. I think that's looking good. I think we can move on to our next color. Again, you do this at your speed. If you feel like I'm getting way ahead of you and you need me to slow down, you just pause me. And then you can go at your own speed. All right, I'm going to go on to um, color number five now, which is this beautiful green. Um, some people say it's blue. Um, the color is actually called bluegrass green, which I think is amazing, but probably not quite so surprising because um, we buy DecoArt paints and DecoArt is uh, made here in Kentucky. So they appreciate a good blue green. Now this one does cover really well. So we probably won't have to go back over it later. I'm going to take it right up to the edge there. I've got a big spot of that bluegrass green. And let's make it the color that was down below here. And again, get your spots on. And then, um, you know, if you find you need to add another coat or um, say you felt like you left too much space somewhere, that's super easy to touch up later um, with a, a tiny paintbrush. Uh, let's see. I think it needs some right here. Try to make your spacing fairly even. You know, if you've chosen to go um, with with really wide open spaces, keep them all open wide. And if you've decided to go with really thin, narrow spaces, try to keep them thin and narrow. Let's fill in right here. It's kind of an odd shape there, but that's okay. We can paint an odd shape. And I know I haven't flipped my canvas yet, but if you need to, you go ahead and do it. Let's do one right here. That's going to come from the edge. And we'll come all the way out. All right. Yeah, I went a little bigger on some of my green ones, but I kind of like that look. I think all the spots need to be very different. Oh. 
you know what? I think I'm going to bring this down almost to the smile like that. And I'll probably come back later and bring that yellow down too. That way I don't have to fit another tiny dot inside there. Like I said, you may have to go and adjust each of your little squares a little later as you go, just so you don't end up um, with bigger, wider open spaces than you need. And you do have white on your in your palette, so you can always cover something up that you felt like didn't belong where you put it. All right, let's go up here and kind of do a big spot that goes up near the top of that. There we go. And then over here, I don't want them the same, so I'm going to have a spot that kind of comes down lower. Oop, got too much paint on there. Now I'm seeing I'm kind of close to that blue, but not close enough, so I better come up a little higher. There we go. Let's see, where else do we need a spot? We're definitely going to need one maybe right about here. All right, then let's put another one right up here. that one for the next color, but I do need something right in there. There we go. Where else? I think we're good for right now, but again, like I said, oh, no, I know where I need one. I think I need one right about here. There we go. And then we're going to move on to our last color. And again, I've left too much space. I'm going to have to come back with um, uh, more different colors of paint because there's more than what we need. And I think right here, I think right here we need a, a bluegrass green. Sometimes you just got to step back and look at it and then you'll see oh I'm, i don't have enough there take three steps back i always tell people when they're painting door hangers take three steps back because nobody looks at your painting with their nose pressed up against it so now i'm going to move on to color six which is this really beautiful bright purple it's called purple pizzazz and i know he needs to start right down here And he is definitely, he is definitely going to need a second coat, that's for sure. It's amazing to me which bright colors don't cover very well. And believe it or not, the darker the purple, the worse it is at covering. My lightest purple is the best one to cover with. Now, you can see I've left this space down here, and I'm thinking that's probably either going to have to be pink or yellow, uh, but that'll be something we go back and pick up later. All right, let's put a purple. Let's make him about this big. And my corners are a little too sharp there. And brush out any clumps that you see. Um, and again, you'll add a second coat probably later. And 
another purple right about here. And I think this part underneath his chin, well, not underneath his chin, underneath his, I guess that's his smile. Though, you know, it'd probably be easier to do it with a small pointy brush. Bring it up so it just kind of comes to the edge, but not all the way. There we go. And let's add, let's add up here, maybe right along the curve of this. Facebook kicked us out. Sorry about that. Um, I'm not sure where it threw us out, but we are touching up um, with our last color, filling in the last little box. And we are using, I'm using the shrimp color. You may be using it every time I turn around. It freezes up on me. All right, we'll put a little spot right here. And go right up next to that eye. And I think we need a little spot right here. All right. I think we're good with this orangey color. So now it's time to look at this and say, okay, oh, no, I take it back. I see one more spot. Our shrimp color needs to go. I'm going to do it right up here into the top of the ear. All right. And this is um, completely up to you, you all. You're doing it um, at your speed and choosing your colors and doing it how you would like to do. Um, but I'm gonna go back through each of the colors that I've used and see if there's a big open space somewhere that could be filled in with that. Um, I'll look to see, okay, you know, do I wanna use um, the blue in some of these open spaces? Well, not there because it's already touching the blue. Um, I don't know that I've got a spot where I need to put blue in. So we'll go to yellow next. I think we can do yellow um, filling in this little spot here. I think yellow could go down here. And I think that, yeah, I think maybe we better put just a little yellow right there. That's a good spot for it. Probably need some yellow right about here. And again, it's going to be different for yours. You're going to fill in where your shapes need to be filled in. Oh, this is a definite need to be yellow. There's no yellow anywhere around it. And I think that's good for now. Now I'm going to go look at my pink and see where I need to put in some pink. Oh, hmm. Uh, well, we'll have a black line there, so it will define it. See how I got a little too close to that pink there? But that's okay. I think we will go in here with the pink, maybe a little pink right here. I think I'll bring this bit of the ear down a little bit, like about right there. I think my pink square here needed to come down a little bit. You can do that too. Look for some squares. Um, look for some shapes where maybe you needed to bring it down a little further just to fill in a hole, like maybe here. I didn't want to leave that big open space there, so I'll bring it down like that. Just a few spots where it needed a little extra coat. 
And then what were we going to put up here? I've got that one spot. I think bluegrass green is the color least likely to be right next to it. And this one is an odd shape. Look around, see where else you want to touch up with your with your bluegrass green. Maybe, you know, bring this corner up just a tiny bit, like right there. And I think I'm looking pretty good and covered there. What are you thinking? Now, if you're not ready to move on to this stop, you this next step, you pause me and um, then, you know, catch up later. Um, but this is where we're going to be adding the main. And we're going to, you know, start with one color and move all the way up. All right. And we're just going to use the tiny, the smallest brush. And we're just going to do a little swiping um, look. I'm going to start with purple. And you want to hold your canvas, you know, you want to be able to brace things. So you're going to hold on to it. Don't stick your hand in your paint palette. And just bring it up like this. You're just adding a little, little straight lines. Use the tip. Don't press down hard. And you want to go up to that second line that you've got. And then go back a little bit and just fill in the bottom of it. You want the area at the bottom to be fuller. Maybe you can just smudge it a little bit, you know, just have a little paint on your brush. There you go. And that's my purple. Uh, next, I'm going to use this uh, the Coastal Waters, the light blue, and you're going straight down on it and just pulling straight up. And go for about that far. I'm going to dry off my brush. Kind of blend in the bottom here. There we go. Then maybe yellow. We'll go in with yellow. And again, straight up, not pressing down. Oh, I still got a tiny bit of blue on that brush. I didn't clean it well enough. to leave a little space because I know I've got two more colors to build in there. Okay, and then I'm going to dry off and again just smudge those across the bottom a little bit so it looks thicker there at the bottom. Then we'll go, what will we go next with? How about the bluegrass green? Now, this does not have to be perfect. All right, I'm going to dry off, smudge a little at the bottom. And let's see, what should we get to the next one? Let's do, um, let's do pink. We haven't done pink yet. And I'll leave just a bit for that shrimp color. Dry off my brush, smudge the bottom. Take it all the way up. Dry it off. There you go. All right. Now we can do our background. And we're going to use our biggest brush for that. 
I don't know about you, but my paper towels are getting messy. Hang on while I grab a couple more. We're still going? Okay. You're going to use your black paint, and this is optional. If you want your background black, this is when you're going to do it. If you've got another color at home you want to use, um, you could possibly pick one of your colors, like you could do the whole background green. Um, I wouldn't want to do pink just because it would run up against the ears, but hey, if that's what you really want to do, you are welcome to do it. Um, now, this is where you can get a bigger, you know, sort of brush full of paint. You don't have to worry about having too much on as long as you spread it out nice and smooth. And you can do a lot of this area that's not right up close to the line. You know, just kind of move it around. And black is a lovely color for covering. Just make sure you spread it out nice and smooth like that. And you'll notice I'm not getting right up to the edge yet. I'm doing my big wide open painting first. I'll get up close to the edge in just a minute. I want to spread a lot of that out. But don't have big clumps anywhere. Then the nice thing about having a nice flat edge on your brush is you can take it right up to the edge of your line and pull away. And that's going to give you a nice, even, smooth edge. Now, some people like to take their brush and slide it along that line. Just don't go too fast. Um, I know when I, when I try to run my brush along the edge and I go really fast, that's when I start making mistakes and, you know, taking my black paint right into my pretty color. And do you see how this just, this color just kind of pops out as we put the black on? I'm going to shift to my slightly smaller brush, that medium sized brush, um, just to get in to my little nooks and crannies here. And you can see I went over the edge with the purple there, but that's okay because the black is just going to come right up to the edge and cover it up. Now this is definitely where I'm going to have to start turning my canvas to be able to reach. Now if you want to pause right here and go blow dry your background so you're not sticking your hand into the wet black, you feel free to do that. Again, go very slowly when you're smoothing right up next to the edge. There we go. Um, let's go back up here. Now, you see those eyelashes. Don't worry about that. We are going to um, bring them back um, using a little layering of paint. Because obviously you are not going to be able to see the black right next to the black. And if you're using the brush to make that edge, again, slowly, slowly. Brace your hand against the canvas. I'm going to flip over.
Now, I've got a lot of black paint on my hand right now, so I don't want to set it up against the canvas and get it on the red color. So, got to be kind of careful. I'm going to switch to the little pointy brush to get down into this detail here. Make it much easier to make that get into that little space. And I might just continue using it along this curve. Now we can go ahead and just come on in here and outline with this little brush. And then we can come back later with the bigger brush to fill in the open spaces. Oh, I just really like the way the colors just kind of jump out at you when you add the black background. Now, if you do end up getting black where you don't want it, don't try to paint over it. Use a little dab of wet paper towel and wipe it off. You can always, you know, cover up with some paint, but you want to try to take most of the black off before you try to paint over it. Black is not one of those colors that likes to go down easily. It wants to show up under any color you've got. All right, now I can switch to my little bit smaller brush and just bring that color up to fill that black up to fill in. flip over completely, switch back to my biggest brush, dry it up really well, and just start filling in these big wide open spaces. And don't go right up to the edge of the main. I'll show you how we're going to do that. Keep filling in. Not going right up to the edge. Though I could right here, I suppose. Yep, that's enough of a straight line that I can go a little way up before I switch to my smaller brush. And if you want to paint your sides, now's a good time to do that too. Or you can wait till the end. Let's see, are you still lined up there so you can see me? And we'll just start filling in. Now you're gonna do this main in a kind of two steps and I think it is best if we leave it upside down like this because it'll be easiest for us to reach unless of course you're left-handed and then you want to switch to the other side. This is where you're going to use this tiny brush. You only want small amounts of paint on it so just kind of dry your brush off, um, form it to a point with your fingers and then you're going to just use the tip of it to just barely draw it wherever you see the white in there, just kind of draw out 
the black just a little bit. And don't worry, we'll go in and, you know, um, get the rest of the black closer. But just kind of get into those little spots there. You're not going to be perfect. It's not going to cover all of it. Don't worry. I just want to maintain that sort of spiky look of the mane. I'm using the very tip of my black brush and I'm not pressing down. I'm just leaving, you know, a little bit of line there. like that and then I can go back and kind of start filling that in more not completely covering up the pink or the other colors but trying to get it good and black to the edge and see it'll maintain the color you were that your mane is All right, and you can go back and touch up on that more if you want. Uh, once you blow dry it, you can go back with your colors and pull them out a little bit. All right, now we are ready to add um, some details with the black, like his little nostrils here are gonna be black. You can highlight the lines there was a line here. You may want to highlight that with your black. There was a line that kind of defined his face there. And I'm making mine a little thick. I feel like it needed to show up a little more. You can go right along here. And then right, um, go ahead and paint that eye. There's a little line right there. And there's this little line right here, because that sort of knob that's above his eye. It's kind of, and it goes right up here on this one. Um, if you want to, you could repaint those lines along the edge. And you can do this with the marker if you're not comfortable with the pointy brush. Try not to press down too hard. And then we will fill in this other little eye right here. And again, you all stop and uh, blow dry when you need to, okay? Um, we are at a good point right now um, to, to add, um, if you want to, add your little eyelashes. You can add them on this side uh, to begin with. Um, and what he has is kind of, um, they kind of curl up. Oh, I've got a new marker. If you have a new marker, you'll have to wake it up. Remember to shake it with the lid on. And then press down on a paper towel, not on your canvas. There we go. So they, he's got several large ones that curl up like that. And then some little ones that kind of come down like that. Now, on this side... We won't be able to see them because of the black on the black. So I recommend um, using your, once you blow dry this, don't try to do it um, while I'm doing the, the speed that I'm doing it at. Um, you can add a little curve of white eyelash there. And 
and that'll show up better. And if you want to, you can dry that white and put a little tiny line of the black in the middle of it, and um, that'll show up as well. All right, and then you need the dots for the eyes as well. I would use, um, you if you've painted with me ever, <laughs> you know we use the wrong end of the paintbrush to do a dot for the eye. So we just take a wrong end, dip it in the white, and we go right there. And right about there. All right. And that is as far as we go. If you all um, want to keep adding, if you see some spots that need to be touched up, you go back and do that. If you want to um, touch up the edges, like my edges, um, you can see a lot of white on them. You can paint your edges black, depending on how you want to display it. And make sure that when you're done, um, it's a little hard to, you could sign it down here on one of the colored spots if you wanted to, or you could flip it over, but make sure where you put your name and the date and maybe even quarantine on there <laughs> so you can keep up with it. So how do we look? Do we look like our other one? I went a little bolder with the colors, I think. Um, but thank you for so much for joining us. Our next uh, canvas I uh, will have up next Tuesday, and that will be the lighthouse. I'll see you then. Thanks.